Father, we thank you so much for today. We are grateful to be gathered once again in your presence. The Bible says that unto you shall the gathering of your people be. Lord, that as we have gathered in your presence this morning, Lord, we pray that you will ready our hearts for the world. We pray that you will speak your word to us. You will speak into our minds. You will speak into our circumstances. You will speak into our nation, Nigerian. You will speak into our, the pandemic. You will speak into our families. And you will speak into our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray that you make our hearts a clean slate to hear your word this morning. The Bible says that unto you shall the gathering of your people be. Lord, as we have gathered this morning, we pray, Lord, that you will take center preeminence, O oh God. You will take control of this gathering today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father, for the vessel that you will use to impact us this morning. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will fill him, O oh God. Let there be a fresh oil upon him this morning, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' matchless name we've prayed. Amen. Anybody ready to give God some praise? Put your hands together in this place this morning. Come on. Yes,
deserve our worship. You still deserve, Lord, all the glory. We don't care what's going on, Lord. We we'll still give you the praise. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody, if you're glad, if you know that the Lord is still deserve the praise. Give them all the worship you got. Give them all the praise you got. Glory, ah. belong. It all belongs to 
the glory. We still give you all the glory. God, my name is John Paul Haruna and I'm here to testify of God's goodness in my life and in my family. On the 22nd of April, God bless my family with a baby girl. Both the mother and the baby are perfectly fine. We've come to return all glory to God. And I also want to thank him for his provision throughout this period. He has indeed been very, very faithful. And we've come to say to him be all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you in church this Sunday morning. Today is the 24th day of May 2020, and the month of May for us here on the bridge is a month of preservation. It's also a month of your favor, the favor of God. And I know that the truth is the favor of God is what has kept you and is preserving you because of the prophetic word over your life. So I don't know what you're going through, but I know it would not be, it might not be easy. But I want to assure you that the God who has already who decided that you will step into this day has already spoken a few things ahead of you and those things will locate you. It will keep you. And by the way, in case you have forgotten, we are overtakers. Our design is to overtake everything the enemy sends our way. So overtakers, I want you to wear a smile on your face and square your shoulders in spite of what you're going through and let the enemy know that he has lost completely. And if you don't mind where you are, lift up your voice and give God a loud shout of victory this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our God. Hallelujah. Well, God continues to do great things in our hearts and in our midst. And God started something extraordinary last week in our message last week when God began to teach us and to remind us that we are supernatural by nature. What I want to do this week is basically continue from what the Holy Ghost was speaking to us last week. And we hope that as we gain traction in the place of the Spirit, the things become clearer to you day after day. And so going straight into into the scriptures I want you to open your Bibles with me to three verses of scripture the first one is in Romans chapter 1 verse 17 Romans 1 17 open your Bibles quickly please make sure you have a Bible make sure you have something you're looking at there's something about reading the Word of God and even though it's on the screen I still want you to pull out your Bible because this is your Bible in fact help me say say this is my Bible oh I can't hear you say this is my Bible this is the Word of God to me whenever I need to know anything about what God thinks concerning me I go into my Bible it contains God's will and God's mind concerning me Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 the Bible says for we walk by faith not by sight for we walk by faith not by sight I'll come to that later third scripture Romans chapter 4 verse 17 Romans 4 17 the Bible says as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickeneth 
raiseth the dead, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. For a simple subject this Sunday morning, I want to title what God has laid upon my heart this morning, uh, Faith, the door to the supernatural. Uh, or faith or another title a subtitle faith the sixth sense of the believer or simply put the sixth sense sense of the believer hallelujah bow your heads let's share what a prayer ever loving everlasting almighty father we come to you this sunday morning because we know that only you can do <laughs> what everyone has failed to do in our lives. We come to you knowing that before the foundations of the earth, you designed that we'll be where we are today and to stand here in victory. And so, in spite of what is happening around our homes, happening around our businesses, happening around the country, happening around the world, we know that the God who is Yahweh, who was and is and is to come, is still the God who is with us, who was here before coronavirus came and will still be here after it goes. And so, Father, you are the only thing that is constant in the midst of shifting shadows. You are the only thing that makes sense in the midst of confusion in the midst of chaos you are still the same you were the same yesterday you're the same today and you will be the same tomorrow so I can bank on you knowing that my faith and my belief is resting on that which cannot change and so Sunday father this Sunday morning we I hide behind the the, the cross as a preacher I hide behind the anointing I hide behind uh, the prophetic word you have released for this local assembly and say father speak to your people I say father touch somebody's life I say father even though they're far from me and they're in their homes we know that the same spirit here is at work there may that same spirit we have drunk into begin to do something in the life of my brother and my sister this morning in Jesus mighty name we have prayed father do extraordinary things do supernatural things do mind boggling mind changing things in our midst this Sunday morning in Jesus mighty name we have prayed everybody shout aloud amen somebody all right so we have three verses of scripture and I'm particularly taken by the first one I read. So Romans chapter 1 verse 17. There are three other scriptures that say exactly the same thing. Now, when God begins to repeat something, it means it's extremely important. When you study scripture, there's something called the law of repetition. When you see a scripture or a thing mentioned over and over in the Bible, it makes you know that there's something the Holy Ghost wants you to remember, to recall and not to forget because of his importance. There are three other scriptures that say exactly what is said in Romans chapter 1 verse 17. The first one is in Habakkuk 2 4. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2 4 it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And the other one is in Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. He says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Look at somebody say, The just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 also says the same scripture. It says, Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So in these four scriptures, it is very clear that the Holy Ghost is trying to repeat something and he's simply saying that the just that the righteous that the believer shall live by faith if there's somebody sitting beside you look him in the eye and tell him you're going to have to live by faith if you're going to get to the supernatural because faith is the door that opens you up into the supernatural last week I started this discuss when we talked about supernatural by nature so if you haven't listened to the message last week, this is a part two of what we talked about last week. I want to challenge you to go and pick up uh, some, go to YouTube or something and make sure you listen to the message last week. But last week we established a few things. 
One of the first things we established last week is that there are two realms of existence. The first is the physical realm and the second one is the spiritual realm. So we have physical realm and spiritual realm and or we have the natural realm and the supernatural realm. Yes. And then we compared the spiritual and the physical and we saw some 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 qualities that defined them and we said that the spiritual is more superior than the physical the spiritual is more superior than the physical realm so that the things that happen in the spiritual take uh, superiority over the things that are happening in the physical realm that you and I can see what's the physical realm the physical realm is the realm that we can contact with our senses with our sense of sight sense of hearing sense of smell sense of touch that's the physical realm we also said that the spiritual realm precedes the physical so that the things that are happening around you started in the spirit so if you want to change what you see in your life today you have to go to the spirit you have to go to the place where spiritual things are changed which is on your knees and change the things that are happening in the spirit which is with things you say with your words because your words shape the things of the spirit so spiritual precedes the physical we also said that the spiritual is more real and more constant than the physical. The Bible says those things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal because the things which are seen are shifting shadows they shift while the things which are not seen which are spiritual are, are eternal so that that which is spiritual is eternal and more real, more concrete than the things that are physical. That's so things we talked about last week. We also said last week that the spiritual Spiritual life, therefore, spiritual life, therefore, is one where the spiritual realities and spiritual laws are superimposed upon or superimposed themselves on physical laws. It doesn't mean that physical laws don't exist. No, 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 no. No, spirit, physical laws exist, but the spiritual laws have forced themselves, have bullied themselves over the things that are physical. So that the physical is running on the background, but the spiritual is what takes over and controls the life of the individual. And then we said that by virtue of spiritual birth or second birth, we are no more natural. And I said emphatically last week that there is absolutely nothing normal about a born again, tongue blasting, demon chasing, spirit filled believer. You are not normal. If they ever told you you were normal, you better tell them to stop it. I ain't normal. I am super normal. I am abnormal. I'm supernatural. We are not normal people. We are supernatural people because we are super normal people. And I said that, and we ended that last week by saying that there are two, that there's one major way you can get into the realm of the supernatural, that you have to be born into it. Yeah, you are born into the supernatural. And I remember reading a scripture from John chapter 3, verse 5 to 7, just to bring back to your memory, where Jesus answered, and he says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, physical birth, and born of spirit, spiritual birth. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of physical is or natural is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Jesus was telling Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you have to be born twice. You were born once, but you have to be born a second time to bring you into a realm of the supernatural, bring you into a realm of the spirit. Because if you were born once, you are physical. But if you were born twice, the second time, you are spiritual oh glory to God hallelujah I also I believe I said last week as well that though we might be born into the supernatural because many of us are born again accepted Jesus as Lord and personal Savior but somehow we are still living as if we are not supernatural so though we are born again or born into the supernatural there is a possibility you can still live as somebody who is physical who is not mindful of the very fact that he has been born into the supernatural realm and I remember the scripture the Bible says in Psalm 82 verse 6 to 7 it says I have said ye are gods I remember I said last week as well that according to this scripture you are God look at your neighbor say you are gods uh, don't be I know I know it sounds a little bit funny with you but the Bible says that ye are gods because you are you are children of the most high but then he says he says but you die like men and you fall like princes. Why? Even though you are a God. 
it means that you can be born into the supernatural but still suffer like the natural you can be born into the spiritual realm but still go through the frailties and the difficulties and failings of the normal of the normal you can be born into a supernormal life but still live like somebody who is normal and natural who is carnal so the reason why that is going on amongst many other reasons is that you haven't learned to open the door there is a door there is a portal you have to open to go and enjoy the things the realities that have been made available for you until the door is open you can't enjoy it so those things I mentioned last week and I said that today we're going to start today by looking at the door what is this door so today I want to talk about doors I want to talk about doors this Sunday morning look at your neighbor say the pastor says he wants to talk about doors this Sunday morning he wants to talk about doors. He wants to talk about doors. What is a door? A door is a hinged or otherwise movable barrier that allows ingress or egress into an enclosure. So a door is a barrier that allows you to go into an enclosure or to come out of an enclosure. A door is a barrier movable. That's the word. It's movable. You can open it or you can remain closed. So sometimes it is open. Sometimes it is closed. But only when it is open can you have access to the enclosure. Have access to a world that is inside uh, of the things that you're looking at for so faith so, so, so talking about doors look at somebody say I'm talking about doors so, so, so a door is a movable barrier number one number two a door controls access into an enclosure into a world so if you don't know how to open doors you can't access different walls uh, a door provides security for the goodies in a space. Uh, so, so there's some good things in a space or some things you want to enjoy in a particular world or enclosure. There will usually be a door that you have to provide security so you don't get access to that thing inside there. But I thank God the Bible reminds me consistently that the treasures and the blessings of God are not hidden or enclosed from us, but they are enclosed for us. God has kept them there for us so we can have access to them. Doors provide portals to the world around us. Doors provide portals to the world around us. So faith, therefore, and what I want to talk about today is faith. So faith, therefore, is a door to the supernatural. And I actually want to push it another step further. That faith is not just a door. Mm -hmm. Listen to me very carefully now. But faith is the sixth sense of the believer. <laughs> oh, I'll come to that later. So faith is not just a door. It's actually a sense that you have to learn to use so you can access the things that have been made available for you for the supernatural. But I, but I, I think I'm going ahead of myself. Let me, let me take it easy. Take it easy just a little bit this Sunday morning. Now, so, so, so there are doors. Doors allow us to have access into different spaces different worlds now now human beings or as man we have uh, we have uh, walls that we need to live in now we also have senses we have five senses these five senses listen to me they are doors that usher you into worlds yeah, yeah, yeah. Senses are doors that God put in place to usher you into walls. Now, human beings, as man, we have five senses. We have the sense of sight. We have the sense of smell. We have the sense of uh, of hearing. We have the sense of, of of tongue, of taste. Yeah, our tongues. And we have the sense of touch. So we have five senses. Now, now, each of those senses usher you, open the door for you to experience the things that happen in a particular world. So, so for the sense of sight, it opens you to the world of light, opens you to the world of color, opens you to the world of beauty, opens you to the world of art. So, so if you can't see, you can never appreciate the world of light. You can never, now close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes. You can't appreciate light. You can't appreciate beauty. So the most beautiful piece of art can be here and you will never know it's here. The finest car can be in this room, in this house, and you will never know it's here. Oh, and if you're single, the finest woman you ever saw can be right beside you. But you never know because the door has been shut and you can't have access to the world of sight. So the senses are sight. They are doors. Let's give another example. So, so consider the sense of smell. The sense of smell opens up to the walls of fragrance, of aroma. Of 
orders so that you can go into a pastry shop and they have the best kind of pastry think of the one you love the most maybe it's a pizza or whatever thing you like you can you know how it smells when they're have you ever been to a bakery and they're baking fresh bread you know the smell of fresh bread but if you have a problem with your nose or your sense of smell you are locked off from the sense of uh, from the world of smell you can't smell food ah Oh God, you can't smell chicken and chips. You can't smell of You can't smell in Kobe. What, what kind of life is that? If you can't smell the goodies, uh, the goodies of this world, you can't smell it. You can't smell the beautiful. Somebody can be wearing the most expensive perfume, Gucci, Givenchy, but you can't smell it because you have been shut out from the sense of smell. So, so senses are. Are doors that lead us into worlds. Let's take, give me another example. If you can't hear, you have been shut up from the you, you can't you have been shut up from the world of sound. You can't hear good music. You can't appreciate good music. You can't appreciate good voices. So so you're dating somebody, the person has a beautiful voice, it's Sonorio's voice, but you can't hear the voice. Oh, sad. Because that your hearing has shut you off and you can't come into the sense of, into a wall. So, so our senses, God gave us the senses, therefore, to be doors to open us into different worlds, to enjoy the worlds around us. Am I talking to somebody this Sunday morning? So just as we have worlds in the physical realm, in the natural realm, which are good and it's okay. There's nothing wrong for you smelling something that is nice. The, appreciating the colors, the beautiful, the rainbow and the stars. Oh, that's nice. But you see, just as the five senses are doors to the natural. Huh, your faith is a door to the supernatural. Such that uh, the supernatural can be existing around you, but you don't have access to it. Why? Because the door has been shut and you can't see it. So just as you need sight to enjoy the world of sights and vision, you also need faith to enjoy the supernatural around you. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. So faith, therefore, is a sense, the sixth sense. So every believer has five senses and then has one more sense called the sixth sense that God gives to him to ruin to enjoy the pleasures of the supernatural but unfortunately for us we are so used to the five senses of the natural and we pay no attention to the supernatural so we are locked out of the graces the beauties the miracles the wonders of the supernatural why because we don't learn how to use the sixth sense of faith Oh, Let me make my point this Sunday morning. In our first text, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, We walk by faith not by sight. Sight here is a sum total of the senses. So if it's my, if it's your Bible you're reading, you can just say we walk by faith, not by senses. You'll be right. So we walk by faith, not by the senses. Oh, oh, so God is not going to guide you by the senses. God is going to guide you by your faith. So, so we walk around. We walk around. So just as I need my sight to walk around, to walk to the place, just as I need the sense of smell. Have you ever shot your eyes but you smell something or you walk into a building and you can just smell that there's something smelling very nice at one corner and then without even seeing it you just follow the smell that smell guides your walk to where you're going to have you ever heard good music playing you walk into a, a five star hotel and you hear some nice jazzy piece playing somewhere and you can't see the equipment but you, you hear the sound and the sound which you hear guides your walk and your walk you go towards what you hear that's the same way that the supernatural is guided by faith. So, so the walk, the word walk there in, in Greek means is peripateo. Yeah, that word means to tread all around. To tread all around. It also means to make use of opportunities. So he's saying that he's saying that so 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 we make use of opportunities by faith. So take out the word walk there. For we make use of opportunities by faith, not by the senses. So we tread around in the place of the spirit. We tread around in the supernatural. We tread around in the, the wonders and the glories of the supernatural. We tread around not by, by faith, not by the senses. 
it also means to regulate one's life to conduct oneself it means we regulate the things that happen around us by our faith it means that for we regulate our life by faith not by the senses Am I talking to somebody this Sunday morning? Slap your neighbor a high for telling you you've been doing it wrongly. You've been trying to regulate your life by your senses. You're failing. You ought to regulate your life by your faith. Woo! Romans chapter 1 verse 17. I, I like that scripture as well. He says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, The just shall live by faith. That word live, there is the word sow in Greek. It means to breed. Hey, so he says, the just shall breed by faith. That does so good. It means to enjoy life. That word zao means to enjoy life. So he's saying that the just shall enjoy life by faith, not by the senses. He also means to be in full vigor. So the just shall be in full vigor, shall be invigorated by faith. So faith, the sense of faith invigorates you. He said he also means to be fresh. I like this one. He says, you see, that word means to be fresh. So he's saying that the, the just shall be made fresh by faith. Look, if you are walking by sight, you will dry up. If you are walking by your senses, you will dry up. In the season where we're living, if you have to walk by what you're hearing every day in the news, you will dry up. Nothing will walk around you. But if you walk by faith, what the word says, you'll be fresh every Sunday morning. Everybody is crying up. Everybody is not doing well, but you're looking fresh. Oh, everybody's drying up. Their faces are forlorn and they're sad, but you're looking fresh. Why? Because you are not walking by the senses. You are living by faith. Slap your neighbor a high five. Tell him I'm done with the senses. I'm done with the senses. It hasn't done anything for me so far. I better switch to the supernatural and to switch to faith. Woo! So we need to faith to walk around. We need faith to make use of the opportunities and opportunities are coming your way. In the season of the COVID era, opportunities are coming. May God open your eyes to see the opportunities in your workplace, to see the opportunities around you in this season. Why one is shouting that there is a casting down for you? There shall be a lifting up. Why? Because there are opportunities opening around your life and by faith you're making maximum use of those opportunities. Somebody slap your neighbor a high five and tell him this opportunity ain't walking by. I am going to take it by faith. So, so what the Bible therefore says is that the just shall live by faith means that the just shall survive by faith. So what sight or the senses are to the natural, faith is to the supernatural. Now that's something you should tweet. What the, what the senses, the five senses are to the natural. That's what faith is to the supernatural. What your eyes and the sense of sight is to the natural world of colors. That's what your faith is to the supernatural world of wonders. Hey, what your sense of smelling is to the world of, 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 of fragrance and the world of aroma. That's what your faith is to the world of the hearing of the supernatural signs and wonders that God is going to do in your life. So what sight is to the natural, faith is to the supernatural. It is therefore, I put it to you, therefore, that it is impossible to leave the supernatural without faith. It's impossible to leave the supernatural without faith. Can you imagine, like I said, what life will be like if you can't see, if you can't smell, if you can't taste? Life will be boring. It will be bland. It will be tasteless. It will be unexciting. There's a beautiful car parked beside you. I love cars. And they are revving the car. It's so sweet. But you can't see it. There is a, a phantom or something. A beautiful car. Red Porsche. What's your favorite car? A Ferrari. Ferrari. There's a Ferrari out there. Yellow. Yellow. Bright yellow Ferrari. It's revving. But you can't see it. Sad. Boring. That's how the life of a supernatural man is without faith. So many things happening, but you can't taste of it. 
Hallelujah. But, 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 so, so, but then to fully understand this, because I don't have time, let me begin to wind down by saying two things. For to fully understand what faith is to the supernatural man, or as God intended, we must go back to the beginning and go back to creation and see how God created man and see how God designed man and how man was meant to function. So I'm going to ask a big question that the psalmist asked in Psalm chapter 8 verse 4. He says, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is man? What is the son of man that you visit him? What is man that you have made him a little lower than Elohim? What is man that you have crowned him with glory? What is man that you have given him dominion over the works of the hands and have put all things under the earth? What is man? What is so special about man that God is interested in man? Why did God create man? Why did he give one dominion? Why did he make man look like him? Well, the answer to those questions is what I want to try to attempt to, to discuss and then to talk about the functionality of man. So I want you to track with me for a few moments. Well, the first question there, or the first answer to why, what is man, is that is in, we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And the Bible says, let us make man in our own likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle of the earth and over the creeping things that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So the reason why God is so interested in man is because man was created in his image the animals were not man was created in the image of God and was created to function the way God functions and the Bible says in Psalm 8 there says that you have made man just a little lower your Bible says angels but we now understand that the original word used there was the word Elohim you have made him a little bit lower shades lower than Elohim so what is man? man is a spirit Look at yourself, look at yourself and say, Man is a spirit. Beat your chest and say, I'm a spirit. If God is a spirit and I'm made in the image of God, then man is a spirit, then I am spirit. I am a spirit. Man is a spirit. Man has a soul and man lives in a body. We are first of all spirits before we are souls. We are first of all spirits before we are flesh. We are first of all spirits. Man is a spirit. Man is not just a spirit, like I've said earlier. Man is God in charge of the earth. That's why God is interested in man. Because he has placed man as God on the earth. He says to man, he says, The heaven and even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth I have given to the children of men. He says, look, I have given, I, the heaven belongs to me. Leave what's happening in the heavens to me. But everything happening here is yours. So I have given you the earth so that you see what I do in heaven and you do here on earth. That's why God is interested in man. What is man that you are mindful of him? God is mindful of him because man is God. God over the earth. Over the things happening around us. Man is a spirit. Man has a soul. Man has a flesh. So let me start by telling you this Sunday morning that the real chinedu you're seeing is not this one here. This is my body. This black, tall black man 100 kg man is not the real man. The real man is inside. Is the spirit. This one is a body containing the man. So the real you is not the one I see. It's not the one that is made up well that you have put mascara and foundation that is wearing human hair. That's not the real you. It's not the one that is plump or the one that is skinny. The one that is like power or robot. That's not the real you. That's the container. The real you is your spirit on the inside of you. Nobody can see that spirit. That's what God created in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. What God created was your spirit. God created your spirit. So we see in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, God creates the spirit of man, the real man, the real man. And then we see in, in, in Genesis 2, 7 and 8, that God then forms the body. So God forms the body from the earth. The body is not what God created in Genesis 1, 26. What he created, when he said, let us make man in our own image, what he created was not the body that we see. So what God created is not your flesh, this thing I'm saying. No, this one was formed. We all have our different containers. But the real thing that is who which we are, our inside is our spirit. Now, where did the soul come from? The soul came from the fusion of the spirit and the body. So the Bible says in Genesis 2, 7 and 8, let's go there. He says, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth. What man did he form? 
the flesh, the body. He formed man from the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. What did he breathe? What did God have? So the spirit of man that was formed was with God, was with the Godhead. So when God formed the man from the dust of the earth, he took the spirit and put the spirit into the body. When he put the spirit into the body, the fusion of both of them gave birth to the soul. The soul came immediately. The Bible says, as God breathed into that man that he had formed, that man he had formed became a living soul. So, you must differentiate your spirit, which was created in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, from your body, which was created, which was formed from the dust of the earth, from in Genesis 2 and 8, to the soul that came after the two of them were formed and put together, so that the soul therefore stands in the middle of the spirit and the body. The soul therefore takes information from the spirit, from the spirit and brings it to the body. And the soul takes information from the body and takes it to the spirit. But you are not your soul. You are not your body. You are your spirit. Look at somebody say, I'm spirit. I'm spirit. I tell my daughter, your daddy is a spirit. He's a spirit. That's how come he sees you everywhere you are. Whatever you do, I see you because I'm a spirit. I might not be there, but I'm a spirit. I can see you. I'm a spirit. I'm not limited by not being in the house. I see what you do. I'm your spirit. You are spirits. You, we are not souls. Your soul is your seat of emotions where you feel, where you, you get angry or you get sad. That's not the real you. The real you is your spirit. You are not a mass of flesh or protoplasm. No, no, no. You are your spirit. Why is this important? It's important because your spirit is what you ought to let guide and rule your soul and your body because that is what was created in the image of God the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, now look at this he says, 2 Corinthians 5 17 popular scripture, he says therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature all things have passed away behold, all things have become new wait a minute pastor it's either God is lying or I'm lying or my situation is lying now, when I gave my life to Christ 20 something years ago, I was angry before. I became angry after. I was fat then. I, I'm still fat now. You know, I was, if you were tall before you gave your life, you still remain tall. So it's not what is changing. If you were an angry person, you might still remain an angry person. That's not what is changing. If you were skinny, you still remain skinny. If you were skinny and ugly, you still remain skinny and ugly after you give your life to Christ because what change is not your, your body is not your soul but your spirit so your spirit change you must believe it that your spirit is new now what was rearranged what was recreated what was restored was your spirit but then there is now a journey that creates and now restores and recreates and re reorganizes your soul and your body but that's food for another day that's when we talk about salvation and talk about sanctification and the work of sanctification but the point I'm trying to make this Sunday morning is that we are spirits we are spirits and what God gave dominion rule to was your spirit Genesis 1 26 and 28 he did not give it to your body he did not give it to your soul he gave it to your spirit he said your spirit shall have dominion over everything on the earth even your body when God gave the spirit the mandate to rule the body was not yet formed Am I talking to somebody? Oh, are there any Bible students here? When God gave that dominion mandate in Genesis 1, 26, there was no soul. So what God was saying was that the spirit was meant to have dominion over the soul, have dominion over the body, have dominion over everything around the earth because the spirit was what was created in the image of God. And how can the spirit exercise dominion? By faith. That's where I'm going to, by faith. Because we know, the Bible says that, that God created the worlds that we know. Hebrews chapter 11. The worlds we see, the things we see, were created by God out of the things that we do not see by faith. He says, by faith we know. So what God did, how God created the heavens and the earth was by faith. And how God wanted us to operate was by faith. So God used the sense of faith to open us up to the realities that exist today. So faith, therefore, is the sixth sense of the believer. But if you still be, don't believe me, then let's go and examine the life of Adam. Let's see how Adam lived in the garden. And with that, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will wrap up my discourse. How did Adam live in the garden? We're going to examine Adam before the fall and Adam after the fall. And I'm mindful of the fact that I have just a few more minutes. Adam before the fall, 
and Adam after the fall. Well, let me just take a few things. Uh, read some scriptures very quickly. Adam before the fall. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 and 20. And the Bible says, out of the, out, out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would name them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help me. Genesis 2, take that scripture, hold that scripture down. Genesis 2, 25. God speaking about Adam and Eve says, and they were both naked, man and wife, and they were not ashamed. They were naked, but they were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? Even though they were naked, they were not ashamed. I'll let you know why soon. Genesis chapter 6. After this is now after the fall. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband to eat. And the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. Excuse me. I thought they knew they were naked before, but they were not ashamed. Hello. Hello. They were naked before. They knew. But they were not ashamed. Now they realized that they were naked and they became ashamed. Something happened in between. Something happened in between. He says here that verse 6 says, When the woman saw that the tree was good for, excuse me, you see that the woman did not see the tree before. She saw the tree. Because when the serpent came to the woman, she said, Have you seen this tree, this fruit? He said, Yes, I can see the fruit. So it wasn't that she did not see the fruit, she saw the fruit, but she saw something else when she saw the fruit something else superimposed itself over the fruit so she couldn't see the fruit as what the fruit was I'm coming somewhere so, so, so when you examine all of Adam's life in the garden there are a few things that become very clear number one Adam operated on the earth by faith before the fall number one Adam was more conscious of his spirit than he was of his flesh Adam was spirit created as spirit. Before the fall, Adam was not even thinking of his flesh. He was not conscious of his flesh. He was not conscious of his soul. He was more conscious of his spirit. His spirit was more real to him. His spirit was more tangible. What the spirit of God said, the relationship his spirit had with God was more real than what his eyes could see. So that he, what his eyes could see were not what dictated what he felt. That was why even though he was naked, he did not feel ashamed. Because in his spirit he was clothed. I wish somebody can see this. But in his spirit he was clothed. He was clothed with the glory of God. So that even though Adam and Eve were naked, walking around the garden of Eden naked. Everything up in the air. But they felt no shame. Because they were more conscious of the man inside than the man outside. So anytime you are conscious of the man inside, what's happening to the man outside is of second, secondary importance to you. So anytime you're more conscious of what God has done to your spirit inside, what your body is going through means nothing. So Paul can say that, look, in my body I die daily. I'm dying in my body, but my spirit is alive every day. I'm more conscious by my spirit. My spirit is driving what I do and what I say. What God says concerning my spirit is what is more important than my faith, by my, by my body. So by faith, therefore, faith points us to the word of God and what God says concerning our spiritual realities. So Adam lived the supernatural life. Why? Because the spiritual realities bullied and overwhelmed and superimposed themselves on the physical realities. So that in the physical they were naked, but in the spirit they were clothed by the glory of God. When they sinned, the glory of God covering them was removed. And immediately the glory was taken off. They realized all of a sudden that they were now naked. So they became more conscious of their physical reality than they were of their spiritual reality when they fell. So that sin, therefore, brings us to a place where we are conscious of the things happening around us more than what is happening inside of us. But faith directs us to what is happening inside of us more than what is happening around us. Let me ask you a simple question. If Adam was meant to tend the garden, how did Adam tend the garden? How did Adam tend the garden? Because if you look at the scriptures very clearly, there were no tools, no scissors. 
No, how do you tend the garden? You get prunes, right? You get scissors. You get all those things. Then you get holes and cutlass. There was no iron. There was no steel, no brass. Until Genesis chapter 5, or chapter 4. Tibal Cain, the Bible says, was the first person who invented brass and iron after the fall. So how did Adam create and take care of the garden? Because he was doing it before the fall. Do you know how he did it? He used his words. He used his words. Why do I say that? Because for Adam to name the animals, he used his words. His words had creative power by faith. Because if God used his words to create the heavens and the earth, Adam knew that if God used the word, his words to create the heavens and the earth, then if I want to name anything, I have to use my words. So, so he said to the lion, you shall be called lion. And the moment he said lion, lion just into a roar. Because Adam created the lion and brought the lion into being in his characteristics. He says to snake, you shall be snake. And snake began to behave like a snake. So Adam used his words to create the things that were around him. In the same regard, that was how I believe Adam cut, tended the garden. He just came to a flower. Flower, cut. Flower, take shape. I want you to be a bulbous plant. Cut yourself into a bulbous plant. I want you to trim the hedges. Hedges, be trimmed. So, 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 he, I, I, he came to, he came, so he came to any place where, where if there was weed growing, I don't know if there was weed growing there. Well, there has to be weed if he's going to tend it or prune it. So I say, wait, move yourself from there. Live there. I don't want you there. Get out from there. So as he spoke, those things happened immediately. But all of that changed after he fell because his words lost power because they were no more coming from the place of the spirit. They were coming from the place of the flesh, from the place of the senses. So Adam guided and ruled his life and everything he did in the garden was by faith and his words were creative. That was why when Eve, when the serpent brought the he brought Eve to the to the to the fruit, and Eve had been seeing the fruit there, the fruit had been there. But whenever Adam and Eve saw the fruit, what they saw was what God said. God said, "Do not eat." That was the spiritual reality that covered what they saw. Whether the fruit was beautiful was not important. What they were focused on was what God said. But one day, the enemy pulled away what God said and now started to show them what was. In the physical so anytime that you are looking at you're ignoring what God said and you are looking at the things that are happening around you you are shifting just as Adam shifted you are shifting just as Eve shifted you are leaving the realities of the spiritual what God said to what the things that are happening around you faith therefore is simply living according to what God said if God said it then it is he settles it I believe it it cannot change and it ushers me to the realities of the supernatural it ushers me to the realities and the wonders of the supernatural look at somebody say I'm done with my five senses I want to begin to use my six sense so that I will live like Adam lived before the fall did Adam not have eyes before he fell he had eyes did he not have ears he had ears did he not have taste he had tongue he had a tongue but what he believed by faith was more superior than what he saw with his eyes what he believed by faith and the word of God was more superior than what anything said around him. So that's the way we ought to live. A man who is living by faith is living by what God said and is more important to him than what he's going through. So in your body, you're feeling some symptoms, but God says that you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. So you have to stick with what God said and not what you feel with your body. Oh! you're scared. How will I live? How will I eat? How will I pay my bills? But God said, I am Jehovah Lee. I am your provider. So I live based on what God said and not what I'm going through right now. For the last scripture, when Adam fell, everything changed. Adam moved from the spiritual, from the supernatural to the natural. So the first thing that happened when he fell was that he started to move by sight. Then he noticed he was naked and he went to get something to attempt to help himself. Sight, you always want to see how you can help yourself. But that helping yourself did not really cover him. He never felt more covered than he was before he fell. So you can't help yourself by yourself. You can only help yourself by God helping you. Then he became ashamed. Shame comes from the place of, of, of sight living. Because how can you be ashamed when God has said what he has said concerning your life? Who told you your nose is too long? Who told you your nose is too flat? 
about that. I don't have time to go there. He became fearful. Lastly, he became put on the gradient. But let me end this way. But at the cross, the Bible says, everything changed. What Jesus then came to do was that he came to revert back to the original. He came to take us back to what God intended at the beginning. What Jesus came was to demonstrate to us that how God wanted us to live when Adam was created is how he, we can live. And he demonstrated it by himself. He took himself as the example. He showed us how to behave, how not to walk by sight, but how to walk by the word of God, how to activate the sixth sense, the sense of faith, and how to produce results. And the Bible says at the cross, Jesus therefore gave us the opportunity to be born the second time. I'll end with this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 to 49. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul in Genesis. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So the Paul in his discourse to the Corinthian church is trying to draw a distinction between the first Adam, the first birth, and the second Adam, which comes from the second birth. So don't forget you have to be born twice, remember? There are two births. So in the first birth, you are born as a living soul. You are born as a living soul with a dead spirit. When the Bible uses death, it doesn't mean that the spirit stops existing. No, it is separated and cut off from the presence of God or from the life of God. When something dies, die, to die means to separate, to separate, to be cut off. So, so when we were born, we were born as living souls with dead spirits. First birth. But in the second birth, we were made quickening spirits. So the second birth was designed for our spirits. Not for our souls. But once our spirit is quickened, it begins to have effect on the soul and the body. Because the spirit is what guides and drives the soul and the body. So, the second birth, we were made a quickening spirit. We were alive to God, alive to the supernatural, and we're alive to the sixth sense, becomes activated. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3, that we have been given the measure of faith. When you give your life to Christ in the second birth, the measure of faith is deposited into you. Your faith level is quickened. Your capacity to believe God's word is increased. The first birth, the Bible says we were born natural. But the second, did I read the entire text? Oh, let me read it again. First Corinthians 15, 45 to 49. And so it is written. The first Adam was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Listen to that. How be it, that which was first, which is spiritual, which was not, that which was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. 48, as, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Hmm. And as it is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly. Now, let me see. So, in the first birth, we were made a living soul. Dead, to, dead in our spirits. But in the second birth, we were made a speaking spirit. Alive to God. In the first birth, we were natural. We were normal. We were guided by the five senses and we were introduced to only the world of the natural. But in the second birth, we became spiritual, supernatural, and we we're now guided by the sixth sense of faith, opening us into the spiritual, supernatural. The first birth, we were earthy, but the second birth, we were heavenly. Do you know that you're not a citizen of Nigeria? You are a citizen of heaven. We are heaven bound. The Bible says in Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven. Our passport is in heaven. From whence we look forward for the Savior of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Oh, he ah. says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family were in heaven and in earth. Our real family, there's some of us in heaven where we are others on earth. But our citizenship is of heaven because we have been recreated by the second birth. The first birth, we bore the image of the earthy. But in the second birth, we bear the image of the heavenly. So I want to announce to you today that I'm not a normal man once again. I'm a supernatural man. 
I'm a citizen of heaven. And the language we speak where we are from is the language of faith. And the only sense we walk with is the sense of faith. That's what ushers us into the world that we exist in. Slap your neighbor a high five and tell him there's only faith you have to walk on. Faith is what you need. Tell him I'm done with my senses. I'm done with the sense of sight. I'm now opening up myself to the sense of faith. Believers, you have to dust and begin to use your sixth sense. That is the door that opens you to all the wonders of the supernatural. When next I come, I'm going to teach us on how to train our sixth sense. Because you see, the more you use your eyes, the sharper your eyes become. The more you use your ears, the sharper your ears become. The same way, the more you use your faith, the sharper your faith becomes to hear and to do what God demands for you to do. Open up your mouth and say, I'm supernatural. I activate the sixth sense. I activate the sixth sense. I activate my supernatural sense. Oh, I'm not walking according to this world. I'm walking according to what God says I am. What God said, I believe, and that's it. Makapados of the Propodos of the Rosso. Eh, Kapadas of the Badagrasa. Open my eyes, oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. Thank you for a rich time in your presence. So many things said in such a short time. But Father, I ask that the words that they have heard this Sunday morning will minister spirit and life. Far beyond the things I've said, may the letter of the word produce results in the life of my hearers today in the name of Jesus. May we not be moved by what we see, but rather be moved by what we cannot see. Because what we cannot see is eternal and what we see is temporal. If we can see it, then it will pass. But if we cannot see it, then it is eternal and will live forever. Our faith will live according to the supernatural realities made available for us. Thank you, mighty Father. And so I commend them to your grace, to the word of your grace that is able to keep them, that is able to build them and that will guarantee for everyone listening to me an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified in Jesus mighty name we have prayed go ahead put your hands together for Jesus celebrate our God he deserves the glory hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord amen Hello and welcome to The Bridge News. I am Olu Ashemo Egyusi. Prayer is simply talking to God like a friend and should be the easiest thing to do each day. Be encouraged to join Pastor Chinedu Nwosu for our online morning devotion sunrise on Mondays to Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6.45 a.m. on Facebook, Instagram, and MixLR, all at Dr. C Online. It has been a challenging month, but in all we give thanks to God Join us next week Sunday, the 31st of May, 2020, online for our Thanksgiving service as we return all praises to God. You can send in your testimonies to info at thebridge.org.ng and send a direct message to our Instagram or Facebook account. May 27th is around the corner. It's another time of the year when we celebrate our children. Parents, please do something special for your children on that day. Share moments with us by tagging us on our social media platforms using the hashtag LittleWords and look out for our repost. Our monthly prayer and fasting secret place holds this Thursday, the 29th of May, 2020. We will have an intense time of prayer and worship online at 6 p.m. Do well to join us. Before I go, I would like to especially invite you to our midweek service online this Thursday at 6 p.m. and on Sunday at 9 a.m. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Do not forget to give your tithes and offerings as the account numbers are displayed on the screen right now. Thank you so much for joining us and remember to look up to God, not down on man. Learn to talk to Him.
Lastly, always wear your face mask whenever you're going out. Wash your hands for 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day. I am Oluwashio Igusi.